Thank you for joining us this morning for our online worship here in Aiken Parish in York. It's a privilege to be able to welcome you and I do hope you enjoy uh, the worship as we go forward from here. We gather as an Easter people in the light of the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Listen to this simple verse of scripture from Paul's first letter to the Corinthians, chapter 15, verse 22. As all die in Adam, so all will be made alive in Christ. Do respond with these acclamations. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed, Alleluia. Praise the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. He has given us new life and hope by raising Jesus from the dead. Alleluia, Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. We're going to sing our first hymn led by Caris and Tony this morning. I danced in the morning when the world was begun. Let's sing. I danced in the morning when the world was begun, and I danced in the moon and the stars and the sun, and I came down from heaven and I danced on the earth. At Bethlehem I had my birth. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I dance for the scribe and the Pharisee, but they would not dance and they wouldn't follow me. I danced for the fishermen, for James and John. They came with me and the dance went on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be. And I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Sabbath and I cured the lame. The holy people said it was a shame. They whipped and they stripped and they hung me on high. They left me there on a cross to die. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. I danced on a Friday when the sky turned black. It's hard to dance with the devil on your back. They buried my body and they thought I'd gone. But I am the dance and I still go on. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. you'll live in me. I am the Lord of the dance, said he. Dance, dance, wherever you may be. I am the Lord of the dance, said he, and I'll lead you all wherever you may be, and I'll lead you all in the dance, said he. Each week in this Easter season we've been using a beautiful prayer or maybe a statement, whichever way you'd like to look at it. Uh, and it's by Gregory of Nazianzus from the year 389. Just listen to these amazing words. 
Gregory says this. Yesterday I was crucified with Christ. Today I am glorified with him. Yesterday I was dead with Christ. Today I am sharing in his resurrection. Yesterday I was buried with him. Today I am waking with him from the sleep of death. Let's look towards our, co our confession together. Christ died to sin once for all, and now he lives it to God. Let us renew our resolve to have done with all that is evil and confess our sins in penitence and faith. Let's have a moment of silence in which we can again offer ourselves as we are to the Lord to seek his forgiveness. Come, let us return to the Lord and say, together, Lord our God, in our sin we have avoided your call. Our love for you is like a morning cloud, like the dew that goes away early. Have mercy on us, deliver us from judgment, bind up our wounds and revive us in Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. May God, who loved the world so much that he sent his Son to be our Saviour, forgive us our sins and make us holy to serve him in the world. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. We pray our collect for today, the fifth Sunday of Easter. Let's pray this together. Risen Christ, your wounds declare your love for the world and the wonder of your risen life. Give us compassion and courage to risk ourselves for those we serve. To the glory of God the Father, Amen. Mo is going to bring us our first reading from the Bible this morning. Our reading today is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 8, verses 26 to 40. Now an angel of the Lord said to Philip, Rise and go toward the south to the road that goes down from Jerusalem to Gaza. This is a desert place. And he rose and went. And there was an Ethiopian, a eunuch, a court official of Candace, queen of the Ethiopians, who was in charge of all her treasure. He had come to Jerusalem to worship and was returning seated in his chariot, and he was reading the prophet Isaiah. And the spirit said to Philip, Go over and join this chariot. So Philip ran to him and heard him reading Isaiah, the prophet, and asked, Do you understand what you are reading? And the man said, How can I? unless someone guides me. And he invited Philip to come and sit with him. Now the passage of scripture that he was reading was this. Like a sheep he was led to the slaughter, and like a lamb before its shearer is silent, so he opens not his mouth. In his humiliation, Justice was denied him. Who can describe his generation? For his life 
is taken away from the earth. And the eunuch said to Philip, About whom, I ask you, does the prophet say this? About himself or about someone else? Then Philip opened his mouth and beginning with this scripture, he told him the good news about Jesus. And as they were going along the road, they came to some water and the eunuch said, See, here is water. What prevents me from being baptised? And he commanded the chariot to stop and they both went down into the water, Philip and the eunuch, to be baptised. And when they came up out of the water and Philip had baptised him, the Spirit of the Lord carried Philip away and the eunuch saw him no more and went on his way rejoicing. But Philip found himself at Azotus and as he passed through, he preached the gospel to all the towns until he came to Caesarea. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And now we're going to have our second song or hymn together. Love's redeeming work is done. Let's sing. Jill is going to share the gospel with us this morning. Please be ready to join in with the acclamations before she reads. Following the gospel reading, Andrew is going to share with us this morning from God's word. Jesus Christ is risen from the dead. Alleluia. He has defeated the powers of death. Alleluia. Jesus turns our sorrow into dancing. Alleluia. He has the words of eternal life. Alleluia. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Glory to you, O Lord. The reading is from John 15 verses 1 to 8. 
Jesus said, I am the true vine and my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that does not bear fruit, he takes away. And every branch that does bear fruit, he prunes, that it may bear more fruit. Already you are clean because of the word that I have spoken to you. Abide in me and I in you. As the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine, you are the branches. Whoever abides in me and I in him, he it is that bears much fruit, for apart from me you can do nothing. If anyone does not abide in me, he is thrown away like a branch and withers. And the branches are gathered, thrown into the fire and burned. If you abide in me and my words abide in you, ask whatever you wish and it will be done for you. By this my Father is glorified that you bear much fruit and so prove to be my disciples. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Do you remember that mythical character John Bull, who is supposed to sum up within himself both Britain and the British, or more particularly England and the English? He's shown in cartoons as a portly man with a bit of a swagger, wearing a top hat and a Union Jack waistcoat. He was used in a patriotic recruiting drive in World War I. Now, if someone got up at Speaker's Corner in Hyde Park and declared, I am the real John Bull, we'd think him a bit of a crank but we'd probably know what he was getting at. He would be arrogantly suggesting that he embodied within himself the spirit of Britain he re represented all our country stood for. The Jewish people didn't have a person to represent their nation. They had a plant, a vine, in Psalm 80, God is addressed, You brought a vine out of Egypt. You cleared the ground for it, and it took root and filled the land. In Isaiah chapter 5, a delightful poem describes a whole vineyard representing God's people, and it ends, the vineyard of the Lord Almighty is the house of Israel, and the men of Judah are the garden of his delight. But the sad fact about the vine, which is God's Old Testament people, is that they feel, fail to fulfill God's purpose. So God, in his disappointment, had harsh words to say, harsh actions to take. We read that God looked for a crop of good grapes, but it yielded only bad fruit. God's judgment follows. I will take away its hedge and it will be destroyed. I will break down its wall and it will be trampled. Our Gospel reading this morning comes from what is often called Jesus' farewell discourses, which St John records in chapters 14 to 17 of his Gospel. There's an urgency about Jesus' words to his 11 disciples, Judas, who's already gone off to betray him. Jesus is preparing them for his death and what follows. And it's during these discourses that he declares, I am the true vine, John 15, verse 1. We might pause here to recall at this time when our focus locally and globally 
is on the environment, how much of Jesus' teaching took inspiration from the natural world? Jesus refers to our dependence on creation and the rhythm of the seasons for food and drink and clothing, to sowing and reaping, to the arable farmer and the shepherd, to the wonder of birds and the beauty of flowers, to the fig, the olive, and here, the vine. It's not clear where Jesus and his disciples were when he speaks these words. Perhaps on their way to the Garden of Gethsemane, they went through the temple courts. If so, they'd have passed the magnificent gold-sculptured vine. And this might have prompted Jesus' statement, I am the true vine. So what did Jesus mean? That where God's people had failed, he now represented all that Israel should have been. Jesus was embodying in himself what God had intended his people to be, the real vine. But Jesus was also embodying what a new people of God should be in the future. Jesus is the link between the people of God of the Old Covenant, who had forfeited their right to that honour, and the people of God of the New Covenant, the Church, already there in embryo in the persons of the disciples. In these farewell discourses, Jesus sets out his vision of what the church should be. Since by God's grace we are the successors of that New Testament church, this applies to us. Having declared, I am the true vine, Jesus goes on a little later, I am the vine, you are the branches. Do you see the amazing significance of these words? Jesus is actually saying he needs us. No vine is complete without its branches. Here he is saying that in one sense he is incomplete without us. Jesus and his disciples together are the church. The church is Jesus and his disciples. The church, our church, can only be the church if it is united with Christ in heartfelt trust and grateful obedience. The Christian will only be a Christian if united with him. Now the reason for cultivating vines is their fruit, the grapes. But to be fruitful, we, Jesus' disciples, need to be united with him in the closest possible way and draw our sustenance, our energy, our life from him. As Jesus says, no branch can bear fruit by itself. It must remain in the vine. Neither can you bear fruit unless you remain in me. Verse 4, to bear much fruit is the object of the church, as Jesus emphasises in verses 5 and 8. Did you notice the reference to pruning? Jesus says, the vine grower removes every branch that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit he prunes to make it bear more fruit, verses 1 and 2. As a vine and any fruit tree needs pruning to cut out the dead wood and cut back the strong growth so that the nourishment drawn from the soil goes to produce fruit rather than rank new growth, so churches and individual Christians need to be ready to accept radical 
perhaps painful, action to make us more productive. It's not flattering to speak about dead wood in any company or society, but do we detect dead wood ready for the bonfire in our lives? When the old church hall of the church to which I belonged in Cheshire was burnt down, it felt a disaster. Looking back, it seemed an example of God's gracious pruning. For from the ashes grew not just a fine, useful building, but far greater interaction between church and local community. For some of us, perhaps, our pruning may involve letting go of dead wood from the past and letting God grow new ideas, new gifts for service. And the nature of the fruitfulness Jesus expects, which is the object of the pruning? Jesus doesn't say, Perhaps he doesn't want to limit the possibilities. Perhaps he envisages no end of new life, light, hope, forgiveness and justice spreading out to neighbourhood, nation and world. So may God give us, corporately, collectively, minds and hearts open to his leading and bring us together, united in Jesus, the true vine, that we may be a fruitful fellowship and bring glory to God. Jesus said, This is to my Father's glory, that you bear much fruit, showing yourselves to be my disciples. May that be increasingly true of our church. Let us declare our faith in God. We say together. We believe in God the Father, from whom every family in heaven and on earth is named. We believe in God the Son, who lives in our hearts through faith and fills us with his love. We believe in God the Holy Spirit, who strengthens us with power from on high. We believe in one God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. In a moment, Jennifer is going to lead us in our intercessions this morning. But before that, Caris and Tony lead us in another song, picking up uh, the Gospel reading. You are the vine, we are the branches. Let's sing together.
Good morning. To produce fruit, we need to be joined on to the true vine. Let us pray to the Lord God Almighty, in whom we live and move and have our being. The responses to our prayers this morning are, Your kingdom, let it come. And the response is, Your will, let it be done. Father, we want to produce good fruit in abundance. Nurture us as branches, nurture us as branches of the true vine. Train and prune us where necessary. And may our spiritual harvest make rich wine, wine of your kingdom. Your kingdom come. Let it your kingdom let it come. Your will let it be done. Father, we clearly see around our world the tragic and expensive consequences of branches cut off from the true vine. We pray for a seeking after your truth and a desire to act rightly and justly in all areas of human society. Your kingdom, let it come. Your will, let it be done. Father, we pray for those to whom we are linked by family, friendships or work. Especially we pray for those separated from their loved ones and their home. Your kingdom, let it come. Your will, let it be done. Father, we long for healing and wholeness in all who suffer and in all dysfunctional communities. Guide us to understand how we might be part of the healing. Your kingdom, let it come. Your will, let it be done. Father, we know that death cannot separate us from your love. In that knowledge, we commend to your keeping those who have died and all who miss them. Your kingdom, let it come. Your will, let it be done. Father, we thank you that we can live in the joyful freedom of your love as we dedicate ourselves to serving others. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour Jesus Christ. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The risen Christ came and stood among his disciples and said, Peace be with you. Then were they glad when they saw the Lord. Alleluia. The peace of the Lord be always with you. Amen. We're going to have uh, some brief notices now. Firstly, let me just remind you that this coming Thursday, the 6th of May, there will be no service at St Aidan's Church on Thursday because it's the elections for the police commissioner. I have just sent out a letter and papers relating to an update and also the forthcoming annual parochial church meeting on the 16th of May. You should have received the letters or be getting those in the next few days. If you haven't had them for any reason please do let me know. Or if you're watching this and interested to read them, also please let me know via the website. May I just remind you that on the 16th of May, when we have our annual meeting, it's going to be on Zoom at 11 o'clock in the morning. Uh, but there will be a service before this at St Stephen's Church, just a short service of communion at 9.30. That should give you time to get back and get your computers or phones powered up and logged on. Finally, 
as things continue to improve in this country, for which we are thankful, we hope that people will begin to return more and more to church now, particularly if you've had your two vaccinations. So do think about whether you could join us again. At the moment, there are still more people watching online than attending church. Let's see if we can reverse that in the coming weeks. Finally, let's have our last hymn together, Lord for the Years. Thank you once again for joining us uh, on our online service today. And again, if you would like to begin to come to church, please do let us know. If you want to find out details about the services or how to book a place to come to one of them, please look at our website. And if you have any questions about the church here in Acom, all that we've said, all that we stand for, or whether you'd simply like to chat to someone or ask us to pray for you, please do contact us through the website. We are here for you. Let's have a prayer of blessing. May Christ, who out of defeat brings new hope and a new future, fill you with his life. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be upon you and upon all those for whom you pray this day and always. Amen. He is not here. He is risen. 
go in the peace of Christ. Alleluia, alleluia. And we say together, in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth, Amen. Alleluia, alleluia.